Hamilton. Who? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good morning, everybody. You know, we had a mayor's call the other day with the uh, League of Minnesota Cities, and we said, um, what are some of the things that mayors across the state can be working on? And they talked about uh, the number one uh, issue across the state is uh, mental health. And it made me think about everything that all of you have been through, particularly in the last year, year and a half. And it's just, it's astounding that, to me, that tens of thousands of times a day, police officers and emergency medical personnel are making great decisions. And once in a while, there's a, there's a terrible tragedy that unfolds. Uh, I was on a U.S. mayor's uh, call shortly after the death of George Floyd. Jane, Jane Castor, the mayor of Tampa, is the former police chief of Tampa. And she said, of course, the challenge is now is that every police officer in the United States is perceived by many in the public to be Derek Chauvin. And we all know that's not true. We know what our force is like here in Edina. We know that there might be some things that we've been asking police to do, just like we've asked teachers to do, that are beyond what they should be asked to do. To be a social worker, to be a mental health expert, to be a law enforcement officer, to swear, uh, to put, you know, honor your oath of uh, protect and serve. It's just an extraordinary responsibility that all of you have that you have done so well in Edina. We're so proud of you here. And as we move forward, and there's this talk all over the country about um, police reshaping of practices. Uh, I think about it in the most positive sort of way in terms of thinking, what can we do to lead as Edina? Like we've always led uh, in other ways uh, in our state and across the country. What can we show people modern policing is like? We've got a chief that's retiring now. And we've got a new chief to replace him. And uh, we'll, we'll pick somebody that's really good, either from our ranks or outside the ranks. But I want all of you to know how much respect we have for you and how much we want to support you in being the best possible police force you can be. The oath that you took to protect and serve is an extraordinary sort of oath that somebody takes. And we know you take it to heart. And so we want to make sure that you know we're there to support you and reinforce the things that you're doing, whether you're emergency medical services people, calling on people and saving people's lives, or you're saving people's lives in another way and serving in such a broad way across our entire community. We know that the people in our town greatly appreciate you. We get notes all the time about how much you're appreciated. Don't give up. This is an extraordinarily difficult time. Don't give up. I watched a speech the other day uh, it was from 2014 University of Texas graduation speech done by uh, a guy named William McRaven, who's head of special command operations down in Tampa, former Navy SEAL. He said all you had to do in uh, Navy SEAL training, six weeks of training, was the instructors kept telling you, all you need to do to leave is ring the bell. Anytime you want to leave, just ring the bell. We don't want any of you thinking about ringing the bell because we want you to know that we're here to support you and back you up 
and help you be the best possible police officers you can be and help you be the best emergency medical services people you can be. So don't even think about ringing the bell. We don't want, to, we don't want you to do it. We don't want you to give up. Even though these are extraordinarily difficult and challenging times, you have weathered through it. You have weathered through it with real dignity and respect. And the last few months when you've had to serve up in Brooklyn Center, extraordinary service on behalf of not only our town, but their town. I wrote to the mayor up there and I told him how much he should be appreciating all these people from the West Metro Command that came to his town to help protect people and property. So we're, you're greatly appreciated. We love you all. We think you're just the best. And as we move forward now into this next phase of life, uh, you know, and it's full of change. It's my favorite expression, my favorite bumper sticker, you know, all these city council meetings where it's difficult. Change is good, you go first. It's not easy, uh, but the world is constantly changing and you'll adapt with it and so will we and we'll be there to, to go forward together as partners. This city council is, has your back. So thank you. And we're, um, this is a day where we really want to remember not only going forward, uh, what we're going to be doing on a going forward basis, but I think thinking about all those folks that have perished, that proclamation I signed last week on, that the council passed, thinking about all these officers that have passed away since the beginning of the, of the Republic, uh, and also within the past year, they certainly deserve our memory and they got it this morning and it was uh, typically done of fashion, very well done and very respectful. And so let's go forward together. Keep me posted on anything that you need. When our chief retires and before we get a new one, let us know what, how we can be helpful to you because we want to be there for you. So thanks very much for being here this morning. Uh, all my best to each and every one of you. It's really a pleasure to be with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for your service.